when we say ideal transformer it means it's a perfect transformer but as we know perfect things do not exist therefore the ideal transformer also do not exist practically and if the ideal transformer do not exist what's the point in studying their properties well to understand more about that you need to watch the video Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Gaurav J. I am an electrical engineer and on this channel I post videos related to electrical engineering which will help you to understand the concepts in the easiest way. Well, ideal transformer do not exist practically, but majority of the practical transformer has the properties which are near to the ideal transformer. Not exactly same, but they try to be as close as possible. So let us first understand what are the different properties and then at the end of the video I'll tell you why it is important to know about the properties and why we should study it right so let's start with the properties of ideal transformer So the first property is it has no winding resistance now we know that winding is made up of some conductive material and generally copper is used so you take any conductive material let's say let it be copper let it be aluminum or even silver it will have some sort of internal resistance even if you take any wire that is available at your home connect the two knobs of multimeter uh, to that wire and put it on resistance you will find the multimeter will give some reading so it is very very clear that in case of practical situation any sort of windings any sort of conductive material will have the internal resistance but when we talk about the ideal transformer ideal transformer do not possess any sort of internal resistance we call it as winding resistance and i'm talking about both the windings primary and secondary now since there is no winding resistance present in ideal transformer there is no question of i square r losses as well correct if in i square r loss if r is zero then definitely the loss will also be zero and since there is no loss there will not be any problems of heat there will not be any issue of cooling the transformer but when we talk about practical case there will be internal resistance which will produce the i square r losses which will further produce the uh, heating in the transformer and for that we will need cooling mechanisms right but in case of ideal transformer none of these things happen because it has no winding resistance so that is the property number 1 now the next property is that it has no leakage flux and no leakage reactance now in the previous lesson we saw that when we bring the secondary winding near to the primary winding some part of the flux also gets linked with the secondary winding and some part do not get now the part which do not get linked with the secondary winding that is called as leakage flux that we have seen in the previous lesson now this is the case of practical transformer when we talk about the ideal transformer it has no leakage flux so whatever flux is produced by the primary winding will get linked with the secondary winding if primary is producing 100 flux all all of the 100 flux will get linked with the secondary winding now basically leakage re inductance is related to leakage flux only so since there is no leakage inductance there won't be any leakage flux so the bottom line is whatever flux is produced by primary will get linked with the secondary there won't be any leakage flux and that is the important property number 2 now the third property is related to the core of the transformer it has no ion losses now ion losses consist of ad current loss and the hysteresis loss now if you want to know what is ad current loss i have a detailed video on that link is given in the description you can go and check that out for a detailed explanation on ad current so these losses ad current losses and hysteresis losses will be there in case of practical transformer but when we talk about ideal transformer the core is uh, loss free it will not have any sort of ion losses right clear so that is 
the third property. Now, if you are finding this video helpful and easy to understand, I am sure that you will also find the course that I have created on transformer very, very easy to understand. The course is available on the electrical guy mobile app. All the details about the course, you will find uh, a link for that down in the description. Go and check out that link and you will get all the details there. Now we have one more property which is related to the core and that is the core of ideal transformer is infinitely permeable. That means it will not get saturated. So if you give some sort, some amount of flux to the practical core, it will work fine for that particular thing. But after some time, if you add more flux, it will get saturated. But that is not the case in case of ideal transformer. And since the core is infinitely permeable, we don't even need the magnetizing current to produce the flux. In the previous video, we saw that we need magnetizing current IM in order to produce the flux. But when we talk about ideal transformer, we don't even need the magnetizing current IM. The core is capable of producing the flux without that. So that is again one of the important property of ideal transformer. Now, since the ideal transformer do not have any winding resistance, so there won't be any I square R losses. It will, it, it do not have any leakage flux. It also do not have any ion losses. And also the core is infinitely permeable. So that means the efficiency of the ideal transformer will be 100, 100%. No doubt about that. It has no losses, no leakage reactance. Core is infinitely permeable. So definitely the efficiency of the transformer will be 100%. Clear? So these are the few properties of ideal transformer. Now, if I have to say none of the practical transformer has any of this property, no single transformer, no single practical transformer. But the question is then why we should study them. Now, let me tell you about that. But before that, if you're finding the video helpful, do click on the like button. Let's see if we can have thousand likes on this video. So why we should study the properties of ideal transformer. Now let me put it in this way. Let's say if you are a student now as a student, you are working to get hundred percent marks, right? If not hundred percent, you will try to be at least near to hundred percent. Well, of course, nowadays students are getting hundred percent also. That's a different part. But if not hundred percent, you will actually at least try to be near to hundred percent, right? That is what we are working. So. This 100 is what 100 marks are our benchmark. Clear? And we are working towards that. Now, the same applies to transformer also. In case of transformer, the ideal transformer is the benchmark and practical transformer, they try to be near to that benchmark. So ideal transformer, let's say they are the 100% marks and the practical transformer will try to reach near to that. So definitely 100% is not possible, but maybe they will try to be at least 90 or 95%. But even to reach to that 90, 95% level, you need to know what are the properties of ideal transformer, what these 100 marks consist of. And then only you will or you can be at least 90 or 95%. So to make improvement, you need to know the ideal situation. You need to know ideal transformer. What are their properties, how they behave under no load or with 100% load. So you need to know all these things uh, to make your transformer at least near to the ideal transformer. And majority of the practical transformer, they have, they possess the properties which are near to ideal transformer and all the manufacturer of transformer, they will try to make the transformer as ideal as possible, not 100%, but at least they will try for 90, 95%. And this is only possible if you know the properties of ideal transformer. Clear? Hope that makes sense. And that is the reason why you should study the properties of ideal transformer. So if you found this video helpful, if it helped you in understanding the things, I'm pretty sure you will also like the course that I have designed that will be useful for you as well. Again, the details are in description. In the next video, we will see the behavior of ideal transformer on no load condition. 
so do subscribe to get the future updates if you haven't subscribed yet that's all for this video guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning <laughs>